Today on News 4 Now, we're going to take a look at what caused a deadly fire on Long Island. It'll be the warmest morning we've had all week. How low the temperatures go ahead. And putting your best face forward, New York Live sits down with a celebrity makeup artist who made an interesting pandemic pivot. Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm Kay Ingram, and for our first story, firefighters say that trying to get that fire out was a real challenge because the damage was super bad. At least five people are now dead, and one firefighter is hurt after a fire erupted last night in Riverhead. Now, luckily, several people managed to make it out of this historic home on 2nd Street. Here's News 4's Greg Sergal with the investigation. Cell phone video captures how this house fire became an inferno in seconds. Shortly after taking these images, Carlos Tobar ran in fear from his home just across the street. You never expect to see a house in front of you to be like, you know, on fire like that. Suffolk police say there were 10 people living inside this century old home in four separate apartments. Riverhead firefighters arrived here about a minute after receiving a 911 call. But the first responders couldn't save a family of five on the third floor. You hear screaming and stuff. I said. Neighbor Steve Tracy watched the tragedy. A mother, her son and daughter, and two nephews died. One of them a teenager. All after a fire official said the third floor collapsed. All the factors that we are looking into point to it being accidental. The fire's exact cause remains unclear. But police say it appears there were no smoke detectors inside. There's been numerous inspections uh, performed on the house and uh, there was never any violation. But Riverhead's town supervisor says no inspection has been done since 2018. The home's owner, who escaped the fire but refused comment today, apparently didn't respond to 10 separate town attempts to update the inspection. Loss of this house is a major tragedy, both for the um, people whose lives are lost, my fellow Riverheaders, but also it's a loss for historic Riverhead. This local historian says the house was built in 1907 by a lawyer from Brooklyn. So beautiful it got its own local postcard. The home then became the centerpiece of Riverhead's historic district on the National Register of Historic Places. I always drove by and I was like, wow, nice, beautiful house. And now it's like, wow, history. In New Jersey, investigators are looking into a freak accident that killed a demolition worker. It happened Wednesday morning at the old site of the Marlboro State Hospital. A worker fell 90 feet to their death at the site, which was under demolition. Info we learned from sources familiar with the situation. As of right now, it's still unclear how it happened, and the worker's name hasn't been released. All right, get this. In New Jersey, parents and former students are livid as they go head to head with the school board over a high school hazing scandal. A heated meeting Tuesday night with angry parents demanding to know why they had to find out about these allegations from the media and not the board. Now, this next part's a little graphic. The Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office says they are investigating an incident where sources say a younger football player was held down in the locker room and threatened with a broomstick. They're also looking into separate incidents of alleged sexual assault off campus. Students who graduated from the school say hazing is nothing new and is part of a culture of, quote, harassment and violence. I was dragged across the locker room floor where I was kicked, whipped with towels, pads, and helmets. Despite actively seeking information surrounding the rumors, nothing concrete emerged. We did not stop there. The head football coach, along with several others, have already been suspended or placed on leave. One board member has resigned. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria LaRosa. Hope you enjoyed a milder afternoon. Not as chilly, and in fact, by this evening, still pretty mild. We hang on to those 50s uh, quite a bit here. We've got the hour by hour showing you, though, some clouds this evening. They clear overnight, so that actually means some early morning sunshine. But look at the temperature trend. We have temperatures that'll be in the mid 50s, even after the sun goes down and slowly falling into the low 50s. Remember, most of this week, we spent mornings in the 20s, 30s, and low 40s. 52 
for the low tomorrow at Central Park. 40s from White Plains, Sussex and Poughkeepsie, so a good 20, almost 30 degrees warmer for tomorrow morning. Into the 50s from Islip to Belmar and Eastport. All right, when the world changed in March of 2020, a lot of entrepreneurs had to make the pandemic pivot. Maybe that was you. Well, New York Live sat down with a celebrity makeup artist who turned her growing business into a full-on brand, helping women look fresh and fabulous. Beauty may be in the eye of the beholder, but we're meeting with a makeup artist who's gonna show us how to put our best face forward. Well, Delina, I am super excited to have you on the show because I have followed your work and have been a huge fan of your work for ages and we're friends. Yes, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for those people who don't know, tell us about your journey to becoming a makeup artist. Yeah, so I started with a degree in chemistry. So it was kind of unexpected that I was going to go into makeup, but I was just really passionate about it and I love making people feel good and it's a great way to do that. So you have this amazing business that you've been able to grow as a makeup artist and then the pandemic hits. Right. How were you affected? I mean, immediately it was like my calendar just started like kind of going away. So I was wondering, what am I gonna do? And um, I've always had a presence on Instagram and on YouTube. And so I just started saying, okay, I'm gonna create content every day. And it just kind of grew and it became something that attracted brands. And now I have brand deals and my business has just completely changed. All right, Selena, so you have some quick and dirty tips, particularly for women of color when it comes to makeup. What's one of the first ones? Okay, so when it comes to women of color, I think it makes a lot of sense to moisturize your skin. I meet a lot of women that say, okay, my skin is oily, I need to avoid moisturizer, and it is actually the reason why we should use even more moisturizer. Interesting. Yeah, so make sure you moisturize morning and night. It's a big deal, especially under makeup. So my second tip is a bold lip, which funny enough, <laughs> we both are wearing. <laughs> I love a bold lip. Yeah, so um, this one is really great. It's like a berry kind of color. This type of color looks really beautiful on everybody. It actually makes the skin look brighter and it makes the teeth look whiter. Okay, another tip for women of color. Contouring. So I wouldn't say that that's really optional for us because we typically have multiple tones in our skin. So you can either get two different foundations where you use a lighter foundation in the center and a deeper foundation on the outside, or you can use um, you know, a bronzer or a deeper contour shade to add that definition, but we have to add definition back into our face. Very, very true. Well, thank you so much for these tips. I absolutely love this, and uh, I'm gonna be putting my best face forward thanks to you. Absolutely, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, this next one is a success story that starts in the kitchen and ends on the stage. News for us, Adam Harding shows us what high kicks and Christmas cookies have in common with the Rockettes. This is the first costume we wear in the show. For Jacqueline De Nicola, just being here is still surreal. This iconic Rockettes costume, I'm sure you've seen it, um, has been in the show since 1933. Her first year dancing in the Rockettes. Well, from the age of about three, I dreamed of being on this very stage. But making it on stage wasn't easy. She had hoped to audition for last year's show. COVID forced her to hit pause when the Christmas spectacular went silent. There are definitely times when it felt a little hopeless, you know, especially with being out of work and not being able to audition. It was during the pandemic Jacqueline longed for any outlet to express herself artistically. And then she found the recipe to success. I stumbled upon cookie making after watching, you know, all those shows on TV where they're making cookies and I got a little bit obsessed with it. Yes, those are all made from scratch. During the pandemic, I would just throw in a batch of cookies in the oven, then I would take my dance classes in the kitchen. It was a crazy time. I would ice them, I would take ballet, then I would let them dry, and I would take tap. So it was, it was crazy. And she never lost sight of her dream. She knew 2020 was a challenge for everyone. It's just the way the cookie crumbled. I did my best to just remain positive. <laughs> The show is now back at Radio City Music Hall, dazzling audiences. I've been so very fortunate to be here for as long as I have. Julie Branham is the director and choreographer. She spent last year planning the show, mostly over Zoom calls. It's been amazing being back. I feel like it wasn't a lost year for me personally because I was actually working on this show 
2021 Christmas during that time saying, how can I make changes? How can I fix? How can I make it feel fresh again? And if anyone knows the ingredients to a good show, it's Julie. I actually started out as a Rockette in 1988, so I have been here for a lot of years. She also oversees the performances in next week's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the tree lighting. The fact that I am still able to create and watch these incredible dancers and Rockettes and singers perform and have the magic come to life is just like a, a it's a true gift. I'm Adam Harding, News 4, New York. All right, friends. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.